Hi everyone, in this video I am going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 3 Core in a session May-June 2023 Paper 3.3. So let's start with the first question. Question number 1, part A. Claudia asked some students to choose their favorite signs from biology, chemistry and physics. The pie chart shows the results. Okay, number 1. Find the percentage of students who choose chemistry. How many choose chemistry? So this is 90. 90 students choose chemistry out of the total are 360 because the pie chart is 360 and multiplied by 100 to get the percentage, right? 90 out of 360 and times by 100, this is 25%. So 25% of students choose chemistry, right? Now for the second part, find the fraction of students who choose physics. Give your answer in its simplest form. Physics are 225 degrees out of 360 degrees. Okay, so 225 divides 360, this is 5 by 8 in its simplest form. Right. Now for part 3, uh, for the number of students choosing each subject, find the ratio biology, chemistry, physics. Give you an answer in its simplest form. Biology is 45, ratio chemistry is 90, ratio physics is 225. First, let me divide all of them by 5. 45 is divisible by 5. This is 9. 90 divides 5 is 18. 225 divides 5. This is 45. And now it is divisible by 9. 9 divides 9 is 1. 18 divides 9 is 2. And 45 divides 9 is 5. 1 ratio 2 ratio 5 right now for part 4 marcus says i do not know how many people choose chemistry but i do know uh, it is an even number explain how marcus knows this because as we know that the number of people who choose chemistry are two this is an even number but for biology and physics are odd numbers right so um, Marcus is correct because uh, uh, if the chemistry has an odd number, if we have an odd number over here, then we, uh, then biology or we can say physics won't be the whole number of students, right? So the explanation is if chemistry has an odd number, then biology or physics won't be a whole number of students Okay, number five, Claudia now tells Marcus that 26 students choose chemistry. Okay, work out how many students choose physics, right? So we know that chemistry is basically 90 degrees, right? So 90 degrees is equivalent to 26. What about one degree? This is 26 out of 90, Right, and we have to find the number of students for physics. Physics is 225 degrees, so 225 degrees is basically equals to 26 out of 90 times 225. Okay, 26 divides 90 times 2 to 5. This is 65. So, 65 students choose physics. Now for part B, the Venn diagram shows information about the number of students in a class who study Geography G and History H. Number one, work out the number of students in the class. Total number of students we have to calculate, which is 5, 9, 10 and 4, 28. So there are 28 students a whole. 
Now for the second part, find number of elements in a group G, which is 5 plus 9, I guess 14. Yes, it's 14. Right. Now for number 3, one of the student is chosen at random. Find the probability that this student studies geography and history. So one student is chosen at random out of 28 students, right? Find the probability that this student studies geography and history. So geography and history, they both are 9 out of 28. Right. Now for part 4, one of the student who studies uh, geography and history stops studying history. Okay. One of the students who studies geography and history, so th those are 9, that student stops studies history, but he still continues studying geography. Complete this Venn diagram to show this change. Right. Okay. So the outer one stays the same, which is 4. Right. Now, there are 9 in the intersection. Now, in intersection, we have 8. History stays the same, which is 10, right? But that student stopped studying history, but he started studying geography. So, it becomes 6. So, this is a Venn diagram. Question number 2. A shop sells food and drink. Part A. Banana cost $1.20 per kilogram. Apple cost $2.25 per bag. Work out the total cost, um, 35 kilograms of banana and 2 bags of apples. Okay, so 3.5 kilograms of bananas, which is 1.20, plus 2 bags of apples, which is 2.25. We have to work on the total cost, 3.5 times 1.20, plus 2 times 2.25, 8.7. Eight dollars and seventy cents. Right. Now for part B, student receive a ten percent discount on their shopping. Okay. Before the discount, the cost of students shopping is sixteen point eight zero dollars. Work out the amount of discount. So amount of discount on this price, we have to find ten percent. Right, so 10% of 16.80, which is 1.68. So $1.68 is the discount amount. Now for part C, the cost of a cabbage increase by 15%. Uh, calculate the new price if the original price is 1.80. So it is increased by 15% of the original price and add this answer into the original price right so 15 percent of 1.80 add in 1.80 which is 2.07 two dollars and seven cents now for part d some customers have their shopping deliveries at their home the cost is five dollars plus one point five zero dollars for each kilometer travels from shop to their home. Number one show that the cost for a customer living ten kilometer from the shop is twenty dollar. The cost is five dollars plus one dollar and fifty cents per kilometer. So for ten kilometer. Let me work on this. 10 times 1.50 and adding 5, which is $20, yes. Right. Now, for the second part, on the grid, draw the line to show the cost of uh, having shopping deliveries delivered. Okay. So, when the distance traveled is 0 kilometer, the cost is only $5. And when the distance traveled is 10 kilometer, the cost is $20. Right, let me roll the line. So that is the line. All right. Now for part E, a bottle of water cost $1.55. Suki has $20. Work out maximum number of bottles Suki can buy and the change she receives. Okay. So one 
water bottle cost is one dollars and fifty five cents right now for 20 we can say 20 divides 1.55 so it's 12 bottles right so 12 water bottles is 12 times 1.55 right so 12 times 1.55 this should be 18.6 18 dollars and 60 cents right so 12 bottles maximum right and the change you receive out of 20 so 20 subtract answer which is one dollar and 40 cents um you have to do the change 20 subtract 18.60 which is 1.40 now for part f a farmer delivers egg to the shop in a tray of 50 okay each tray contain 50 eggs uh, the egg uh, are then put into boxes of 12 okay boxes of 12 there are no egg left in a tray and all the egg boxes are full work out smallest possible number of eggs that the farmer delivered so the smallest possible number of eggs that the farmer delivers so the smallest means we have to work on lcm least common multiple of 50 and 12 50 prime factorization is 5 times 10 5 is a prime number 10 is not a prime number 10 is 2 times 5 and 12 prime factorization is 2 times 6 is 12 and 6 is 2 times 3 right now let me pick the common ones the common is 2 right so the LCM is going to be 2 is common, the rest of uncommons are 2, 3, 5 and 5. Right. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5, 300. So this is the smallest possible number of eggs that the farmer delivered. Now for part E, G. Uh, the shop sells bottles of orange juice in three different size bottle a bottle b and bottle c work out which bottle is the best value um, show how you decide all right okay now let me work on a we have half liters cost is 1.30 right so one liter cost would be 1.30 times by two this would be 1.30 times 2. This is 2.6. $2.60. Right. Now let me work on B. Now for bottle B, 1.2 liters cost is 3.20. Right. So 1.2 is basically, okay, divided by 10. Sorry, 1.2 is 6 by 5. This is 6 by 5 liters, right? So what about 1 liters, which is 3.20 over 1.2? 3.20 divides 1.2. This should be 2.667, right? Now for bottle C. 2 liters cost is $5.25. 1 liter cost is 5.25 divides 2. 5.25 divides 2. This is 2.625. Which one is the best? 2.625, 2.667, 2 2.60. So the bottle is, is the best. The price. The lesser the price is the best option. Now question number three, part A, the diagram shows a shape on a one centimeter square grid. Work out the area of the shape. Okay, let me break the shape. So this is a triangle, a triangle, a triangle. And this is a rectangle, this and another rectangle, right? So this is a triangle which is half base and height. So the base is two and the height is one. So 
the area is half base times height half two times one its area is just one so again half two times one is one this is half one times one is half this is one two three four five five times one is a rectangle which is five two times one is rectangle it's two okay let me add them up one plus one plus zero point five plus two plus five nine point five centimeter square right now for part b work out the parameter of a rectangle parameter of a rectangle is two times the length plus width which is two times seven plus twelve right so 7 plus 12 times by 2 this is 38 centimeter now for part c a square has an area of 841 centimeter square right work out the length of one side of the, the square so area of a square is basically equals to side times side or we can say side square so this is 841 right so doing the square root 841 this is 29 centimeter is the length of each side now for part d the diagram shows a cuboid made from one centimeter cube cubes right it's a cuboid number one work out the volume of the cuboid so volume of a cuboid is length times width times height so the volume is going to be length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Width is 2 units and the height is 3 units. So this is 8 times 2 times 3 which is 48 centimeter cube. Right. Now for uh, part 3, write down the dimensions of a different cuboid that... Um, can be made using all the cubes okay so uh, the cuboid should be different but the dimensions are not 8 2 and 3 it the volume st uh, stay should be same but the dimensions are not the same okay if I can say the dimensions are hmm, instead of 8 we can take 4 times 2 is 8 and 6 okay so this is four times two times six is 48 yes this is the one set of dimensions you can take any other but the product of all three should be equals to 48 now for part e the diagram shows three small circles and one large circle the large circle has a radius of 20 centimeter the small circles each have a radius of four centimeter work out the shaded area give your answer in terms of pi okay so the shaded area means um, shaded area is area of large circle subtract three times area of small circles right so area of a circle is pi r square right so pi times radius is 20 square minus 3 times uh, the small circle has a radius of 4 pi times 4 square right so the answer should be in terms of pi so pi is common so 20 square minus 3 times 4 square okay 20 square is 400 minus 3 times 4 squared is 16, which is 352. 352 pi centimeter square. Now for part F, the exterior angle of a 9-sided regular polygon is 40 degree. That is the exterior angle we have given. Number 1, work out the size of interior angle of this polygon. So measure of each interior angle of a polygon is number of sides minus 2 times 180 divided by the number of sides which is 9 okay so 9 minus 2 is 7 7 times 180 divided by 9 is 140 degrees 
is each interior angle. Now for the second part, the diagram shows a regular pentagon inside um, part of a regular nine-sided polygon, right? The diagram shows a regular pentagon and uh, inside part of a regular nine-sided polygon. Work out the value of x. So this is a pentagon, one, two, three, four, five. So regular pentagon, five sides are in the pentagon. Let me find measure of each interior angle of a pentagon. Interior angle is uh, number of sides minus two times by 180 divided by number of sides, right? So five minus 2 is 3, 3 times 180 divided by 5, this is 108 degrees, right? So all these angles are 108. This is also 108, this is also 108, right? And this is a regular nine-sided polygon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, right? So for nine-sided polygon, we know that interior angle is 140 degrees. So this whole interior angle, this interior angle, this interior angle, this is 140 degrees, right? We have to solve for x. So 140 is the sum of x, 108, and x, right? So 140 degree is basically equals to x plus x plus 108. To solve for x, we can do 140 minus 108 divided by 2. This is x. Okay, 140 subtract 108 divided by 2, 16. So x is 16 degrees. Question number 4, part A. A boat sails from A to B. The travel graph shows this journey, right? So the point A and the point B from A to B, right? Number one, write down the time that the boat leaves A. Okay, this is 10, 10, 20, 30. So at 10, 20, the boat leaves A. Now for second part, work out how long in minutes it takes the boat to sail from A to B. From 10, 20 to 11. So it's 40 minutes. Now for part 3, the boat stays at B for 20 minutes. The boat then sails to C at a constant speed of 8 km per hour. Complete the travel graph. Okay, the boat stays at B for 20 minutes. So this is a point B for 20 minutes. So 11 to 11, 20. Right. The boat stays at B. Then it goes to C at a constant speed of 8 km per hour. So the speed is distance over time. So we have to find out the time, distance over speed. So the distance between B and C. B is 6 and C is 18. So the distance is 18 take away 6 is 12, right? So the distance is 12 km. And the speed we have given is 8 km per hour. So this is answered in terms of hour. 12 out of 8 is 1 hour and 30 minutes, right? So from this is equivalent to 1 hour 30 minutes, right? So from 11.20, it's 12.20 and 20, 30, 40, 50. So at 12.50. The boat is at the point C. The C is over here. Let me complete the travel graph. Right. Now for the fourth part, work out the average speed in kilometer per hour for the whole journey from A to C. Okay, the average speed is total distance traveled over total time taken. Right, so the distance traveled from A to C. A to C, it's 18 kilometer is the distance, 18 kilometer, and the time we have to find in terms of hours, right? 10.20 to 11.20 is one hour, 
right? 1120 to 1220 is 2 hours and 10, 20, 30, 2 hours and 30 minutes. So we have 2 hours, 30 minutes. This is 5 by 2. Right. 18 divides also. And this should be 7.2 kilometer per hour. Right. Now for part B. The scale drawing shows the position of two ports X and Y. The scale is 1 centimeter represents 8 kilometer. Right. So two ports are X to Y. The north line, the sea and the land and the scale we have given. Number one, measure the bearing of Y from X. Okay, let me connect them with a straight line. So the bearing of Y from X. So from X from north line to the Y, we have to find this distance. So you can see this is 65 degrees. The bearing is 65 degrees, right. Now for the second part, uh, a boat B is 52 km from X and 80 km from Y. On the scale drawing, mark the position of B. Boat B is 52 km from X. So from X, it is 52 km and from Y, it is 80 km, right. So the scale is in terms of centimeters. So we have to convert it into centimeters first. Okay. So one centimeter equals to eight kilometer. Right. What about 52 kilometers? So which is 52 out of eight centimeters. And what about um, 80 kilometers? This is 80 out of eight centimeters. Okay, 52 divides 8, 6.5, and 80 divides 8 is 10. This is in centimeters. Okay, so from B, okay, let me open the compass. Hmm. This is centimeters. So from X, it is 6.5 centimeters. This is 7, yeah, this is 6.4, little bit more, Six point five exactly. So from X, 6.5, right, and from Y it is 10 centimeters. This is 9.5, not it's closer to 10, not exactly 10. This is little bit more. <laughs> Less. Now this is exactly 10, right? Okay, at Y we have to draw an arc of 10 centimeter and we have to check at what point they intersect. So the two arcs intersect at this point. Let me draw the line from X. On the scale drawing, mark the position of B. No, no, not connected. So this is just B, the board B. Just mark the position. Now for the part three, um, a ship S is on the bearing of 208, 284 degrees from X. Okay, work out the bearing of X from S. First, we have to uh, label the ship S. Okay, let me extend the north line on X. Right, the ship S is on the bearing of 284 degrees from X. So from the north line of X. So this hole is 180. So from 284, take away 180. So 284 subtract 180. 
this is 104 degrees right so this from the north line of x to 104 so let me calculate where is 104 okay then 20 30 40 104 is over here right so connect with s here is s right so the north line of x to this whole s this bearing is 284 degrees right now we have to work out the bearing of x from s so the north line of s right we have to find this angle right so these two are parallel lines and they are connecting with a line so these are two alternate angles and they are equal so this angle is 104 degree this angle is also 104 degrees right so that bearing is 104 degrees okay question number five the grid shows the first three diagrams in a sequence each diagram is made using sticks one two three party on the grid draw the diagram four one we have two here three now it should be four okay so four it means four we have to make all right with the one okay let me draw the first one this shape look like a house okay one this one is two this one is three and this one is four right Okay, now for part B, complete the table. Uh, diagram numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Number of sticks used are, okay, so the first diagram, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sticks are used, then 9, and then 13. Okay, now we have to count the number of sticks used in diagram 4. Okay, so it means in 5, sorry, 9 minus 5 is 4 and 9 plus 4 is 13 so adding 4 each time basically so right 5 plus 4 okay and then plus 4 13 plus 4 is 17 and plus 4 is 21 now for part c1 find an expression in terms of n for the number of sticks in diagram n number of sticks so the difference is 4 so 4n plus 1 4 times 1 plus 1 is 4, 1 5 4 times 2 is 8 8 plus 1 is 9 4 times 3 is 12 12 plus 1 is 13 and so on now for the second part uh, one of the diagram has 73 sticks work out its diagram number okay so number of sticks are 73 so we can say 4n plus 1 equals to 73. Diagram number 4n equals to 73. Take away 1 which is 72. So number of sticks are 72 out of 4. Okay, 72 divided by 4 which is 18. So the diagram number is 18. So 18th diagram has 73 sticks. Now for part D number 1, show that the total number of sticks needed to make the first three diagrams is 27. Okay, first three diagrams, total number of sticks 5, 9 and 13. We have to add 5 plus 9 plus 13. Right. 5 plus 9 plus 13, which is 27. Yes. Now for second part of D, the total number of sticks needed to make the first k diagram is 2k square plus 3k. 
show that this expression gives the correct total number of sticks needed to make the first three diagrams. So for first diagram we have k equals to 1, right? So 2 times 1 square plus 3 times of 1 and this should be 2 plus 3, this is equals to 5. So we need 5 sticks for the first diagram, right? Now when k equals to 2, we have 2 times 2 square plus 3 times 2. This should be 2 times 4 and 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 6. We have um, 14. Sorry, this was not the question. The question is show that this expression gives the correct total number of sticks needed to make the first three diagrams. The number of sticks needed to make the first three diagrams is 27, right? So the first three diagrams, K should be 3, 2 times 3 square plus 3 times 3, right? So 2 times 9 plus 3 times 3, 2 times 9 is 18 and 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 18 is 27. We just have to show this one, not with the 1 and not with the 2. Sorry. Now for part 3. Tobias wants to make the first 10 diagrams. He has already made the first 3 diagrams. So in the first 3 diagrams, 27 sticks are used. He has 240 sticks left to make the remaining 7 diagrams. Right. Work out how many sticks he has left when all 10 diagrams are made. So for 10 diagrams, we use the same formula 2k square plus 3k. So for 10, 2 times 10 square plus 3 times of 10. So this should be 2 times 10 square plus 3 times 10, which is 230. So 230 sticks are used for all 10 diagrams. Right now, 240 sticks are left for the remaining seven. Right, so the left are from 240, take away 230. This is 10. Right, and adding 27, so that should be 37. So, means 37 sticks are left when all 10 diagrams are made. Question number six. Part A write down the equation of line L in the form y equals to mx plus c. So the y-intercept is 3, right, and we have to work on the slope. And uh, let me take another point on the slope. Let me take this point. So this is negative 2 and 7, minus 2, 7, and this point is 0, 3. Okay, so the slope, we have two points, minus 2, 7, and 0, 3. Let me work on the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 3 take away 7 is 4 minus 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So y equals to minus 2x and the c value is 3. The y intercept minus 2x plus 3. Now for part b number 1, complete the table of values for the quadratic function. So when x is negative 2, sorry, minus 2 square minus 3 into minus 2 minus 3. This is 7. For 0, we have negative 3. Let me work for 3. 3, 3, it's negative 3. And for 5, this is 7. Now for second part on the grid, draw the graph of the function for minus 2 to 5. Right. When x is minus 2, y is 7. x is negative 2, y value is 7, which is negative 2, 7. Yeah, this point. Minus 1, 1. Okay. The next point is 0, negative 3. 
y is negative 3 downward my 1 minus 5 it's 1 and minus 5 2 minus 5 okay 3 minus 3 3 minus 3 and 4 1 sorry 4 1 is this point not this one 5 7 5 we have 7 at the top this is 6 and this point is 7 okay let me connect all the points to get the accurate curve So this is the shape of that curve. Now for part C number one, write down the coordinates of the lowest point of the graph of this function, the lowest point. The lowest point is basically the vertex. You can see from the graph, the lowest point is the vertex. We have to find the, its coordinates, right? So as you can see, is it's between one and two. So the middle should be 1.5 and um, minus 5, minus 5.2 or 3 we can say, yeah. So the lowest point is the vertex which x coordinate is 1.5, right? Because this point is 1, this point is 2, the middle is 1.5 and the y coordinate is not negative 5. It could be negative 5.2, 5.4, we can say negative 5.3 we can take. Right, that is the lowest point. Uh, 1.5 and minus 5.3. Right, now for the second part of C on the grid, draw the line of symmetry of the graph of uh, the function. So the line of symmetry is again 1.5, x is 1.5. Let me draw the line of symmetry here. x is 1.24, this is 5. This is x is 1.5. Okay, now for part 3, write down the equation of line of symmetry, which is x equals to 1.5. Now for part D, write down the coordinates of the point where the line L intersect the graph of the function. And x for x should be greater than 0. x is greater than 0, the line intersect, right? So the line intersect at 3 and negative 3. So when x is 3, the y is negative 3. All right. Question number 7, part A. The diagram shows a triangle ABC and a straight line BCD. Number 1, angle ACD is 108 degree. Write down the mathematical name of this type of angle. That is an obtuse angle. More than 90 degree. Now for second part, work out the value of x. Okay, the straight line is 180, so the x should be equals to from 180, take away 108 degrees. Right, 180 minus 108, this is 72 degrees, is the x, right. Now for part 3, work out the value of y. Sum of all angles of a triangle is 180, so y should be equals to 180 minus 108 minus 46. Right. 180 minus 108 minus 46, this is 26 degrees. Now for part B, show that the mean uh, of the angles in any triangle is 60 degrees. Mean is basically sum of all angles of a triangle, which is 180 degree, divided by the number of angles. So there are three angles in a triangle. 
the total right so 180 divided by 3 that is 60 right part C the diagram shows a right angle triangle calculate the value of H okay to solve for H we have to use a trigonometric ratio uh, adjacent over hypotenuse for cause cause of 35 degrees adjacent is 8 centimeter and the hypotenuse is H and from here the H value is 8 over cos of 35 degrees right cos 35 8 divides answer is 9.77 centimeter is the H value now for part D triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR number 1 calculate PR P to R okay so the two triangles are similar the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal so PR its ratio with AC which is 2.4 centimeters and this is 6.12 out of 1.36 so what is PR 6.12 divides 1.36 and multiply by 2.4 this is 10.8 centimeters now for second part calculate BC BC okay again we can say BC over 7.92 and this is equals to 1.36 out of 6.12 the ratio of the corresponding sides are same for similar triangle 1.36 divide 6.12 and times it by 7.92 1.76 centimeter right now for part e the diagram shows a right angle triangle calculate the parameter of this triangle so it is a right angle triangle first we have to find the third side of the triangle which is hypotenuse square equals to 24 square and let's say this is x so what about x square this is 26 square minus 24 square and the square root at the end 26 square minus 24 square and square root of answer this is 10 right 10 centimeter now find out the parameter which is sum of all sides of a triangle which is 10 24 and 26 okay 10 plus 24 plus 26 is 60 this is 60 centimeters right question number eight part a the length l cent l meter of a piece of wire is 18.7 meters correct to the nearest 10 centimeters complete the statement about the value of l okay one meter has 100 centimeters 10 centimeters is 10 meters over 100 right 10 over 100 is 0 0.1 0 0.1 meters is equals to 10 centimeters correct to the nearest 0 0.1 meters this is basically my right, this is in meters this should be in meters we have to find the upper and lower bound 18.7 we have to add and subtract 0 0.1 half of 0 0.1 right 0 0.1 divided by 2 0 0.1 by 2 this is 0 0.05 18.7 add 0 0.05 is um, 18.75 and subtract this is 18.65 right now for part B, 850 meters of wire has a mass of 130.5 kilograms. Work out the length of wire in meters that has a mass of 900 grams. Okay, 1 kilogram has 1000 grams. 130.5 kilograms has how much grams? 130.5 times 1000. This is... 13,500 grams okay so 850 meters of wire has a mass of 
113,500 grams, right? One meter mass of wire has the mass this much grams, right? Divides 850. This would be for one meter, it is 153.5 grams, right? Now we have to find the length of wire in meters that has a mass of 900 grams. Okay, so for 900 grams, right, this should be 850 divides 130500 times 900 meters of wire. 850 divides 130500 and times by 900. This is 5.86 meters. Right. Now for part C, aluminium is used to make the wire. The mass of 1 cm cube of aluminium is 2.7 grams. Work out the mass in grams of 600 cm cube of aluminium. Give your answer in standard form. Right. 1 cm cube is this much. What about 6000 cm cube? 6000 times 2.7. 6000 times 2.7. Mm, this is in grams, right? Which is 16,200 grams, right? So in standard form, we have to convert the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 1.62 times 10 to the power 4. Now for part D, a 12 meter length of wire increase in length to 12.017 meters. The length is increased when its temperature increases. Calculate the percentage increase in the length of the wire. How much is the increase? 12.017 to 12 divides the original multiply by 100 is the percentage increase. 12.017 minus 12 divided by 12 times by 100 this is 0 0.14 0 0.142 percent is the percentage increase in the length of the wire so that was the last question of our paper if you have any queries please let me know in the comment section and please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching see you next time take care